Good morning. Someone once said that time is the greatest teacher, but unfortunately it kills all of its students. When the Jewish people are told that they're going free from Egypt in this week's Torah portion, the very first commandment they receive is to count months and years. The mitzvah of Rosh Chodesh, the new month, the calendar based on the lunar cycle. And indeed, tonight and tomorrow is Rosh Chodesh Shabbat. And of course, on the secular calendar, we began not only a new month, but an entire new year. Why is it that the very first commandment the Jewish people received was to mark time? And the answer is that there are three types of time. The first form of time is what I would call restless time. Time that we're bored, we're going around aimlessly, not knowing what to do to fill our time. But then there's a second type of time, and that is productive time. Time that is used maximally, where you're so busy that you feel that time is a restriction because you have more things to do than the time allows. But then there's a third form of time, which is the ultimate form of time, and that is redemptive time. Because unfortunately, no matter how productive you are in your life and how much you accomplish every day, time is limited. And therefore, as the quote says, time is a great teacher, but ultimately it kills all of its students. Ultimately, our time is up. So how do we transcend the limitation of time? And the answer is the third form of time, redemptive time. What is redemptive time? Redemptive time is when we do things that have an everlasting, transcendent impact not just on our lives, but on the lives of others. Because then we release and redeem the power and the potential of that moment, that even when our personal time has unfortunately come to an end because of our mortality, the deeds that we have done will live on for all of eternity. To give you an example of that, there's a story that was told by the Lubavitcher Rebbe once. The Rebbe initiated a campaign that little girls should begin lighting Shabbat candles from the age of three years old. And the Rebbe once told over the following story at a Hasidic gathering, that there was a girl in Israel who went to a secular school. She came from a completely non-observant home. The family did not observe any of Judaism. But one day someone came and spoke to the class about candle lighting, the mitzvah of girls to light candles. And this girl was only five years old, but this, the girl who came and spoke to the class gave them each a candlestick and a card with all the blessings. The little girl was five years old. She came home really excited and she said, Mommy, Mommy, this Friday I want to light my candles. And the mommy said, No, we're not religious. We don't do that. You know, the mother was intimidated by the daughter setting new customs in the home. She wanted to feel like she's in charge of the home. But the girl started to cry and, you know, get upset and create a temper tantrum. I want to light my candle. I want to light my candle. So finally, when it came Friday, the mother relented and said, Fine, you can light your candle. She was so happy, she started to sing and dance. She ran to her room, put on her nicest clothing, came out with her candle, lit the candle, said the blessings. Well, the next week, the girl went to prepare her candle again. And this time the mother said, you know what? What kind of a parent am I? If my child's lighting a Shabbat candle, why don't I join her, do it together with her? So the mommy said, you know what? I'm gonna light candles with you. And sure enough, mother and daughter lit the candle together. Well, meanwhile, the father was sitting and watching television Friday night while the candles were burning. And so the next week, the father said, you know what? My wife and my daughter are lighting candles. During the time that the candles are burning, I'm going to turn off the television. Well, sure enough, they turned off the TV for the time that the candles for Shabbat were burning. Then the next week, when the phone rang, they said, you know, if the candles are burning and the television is off, we shouldn't really pick up the phone while the candles are burning. And then the next week, the father said, you know, if my daughter and my wife are lighting candles, I should make Kiddush. And so sure enough, the next Friday night, he made Kiddush while his wife and daughter lit the candles. The next week, his wife said, you know, if we're already having the Kiddush and the candles are burning, why don't we have a Shabbos meal together? And so she prepared a Shabbos meal with Chal and they sat and they ate. <laughs> after a while, they said, you know what, if we're already doing all that, why don't we go to a shul and daven, go to services Friday night after we light the candles and come back and have a Shabbat dinner. And the Rebbe said this continued from week to week. And then the family said, let's go on Shabbat morning as well. Let's try the Shabbat morning services until the entire family became a observant Jewish family. This one little girl with her one little candle, which took less than a minute to light and say the blessing, led to the entire transformation of her entire family, which will have an everlasting impact for generations to come 
A family that would have been completely assimilated and lost from their Jewish heritage has now re-strengthened their roots and their observance and their connection to Torah and mitzvot. That is the ultimate goal of utilizing time in a way that is not only not boring, unproductive and restless, not only productive and filled with achievements and accomplishments, but to look at each and every day and say, which actions, which deeds, which moments are moments that have the potential to be eternal. And that's why the very first mitzvah the Jewish people received is the mitzvah to count time, because counting time and marking time means that not only do you count time, but you make sure that your time counts and that your time leaves a mark, not only on yourself, but on others. Have a wonderful day.